Mrs. Rexroth, your husband said you were beautiful, but I was unprepared to meet the most beautiful woman I'd ever met. Hmm. Dismiss thy vows, thy feigned tears, thy flattery. For where a heart is hard, they make no battery. Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> Do you have a hard heart, Marilyn? Have you seen the tape? No, not yet. Watch the tape, and then we can discuss my heart. My solicitor says that you've been too successful. That you're bored, complacent, and on your way down. But you don't agree. Why would you say that? How would you be here? I told you. I was hungry. Mm. Tornadoes of beef. The lady will have the same. I assume you're a carnivore, Marilyn. <laughs> Miles, you have no idea. Mushroom risotto with white truffle. Want to go to Paris for the weekend, Marilyn? Have you ever been married, Miles? No. You don't believe in it? As a matter of fact, I'm a huge fan. You just haven't met the right person. Not yet. Have you, Marilyn? I was married to Rex for a long time. I was an excellent wife, lover, partner, friend, hostess. There was only one thing I did wrong during those years we were together. I got five years older. Do you think you should be able to ditch me for that? He wants a reconciliation. Rex screwed up and I nailed his ass. Now I think I shall have it stuffed and mounted and have my girlfriends over to throw darts at it. Man hater, huh? People don't go on safari because they hate the animals. So it's just for the hunt? With a trophy at the end? No, nothing so fruitless. This divorce means money. And money means independence, and that's all I'm after. Gotcha. But what is it you're after, Miles? Hmm? Oh, I'm pretty much like you. Looking for an ass to mount. Well, don't look at mine. Is everything all right? I had a couple of ghosts on my tail on the way here. Took some shaking off. Quite efficient. How about you? Nothing. I took all precautions. I want you to meet a man called Mason Harding. I want you to interview this Mason Harding for Transoceanic. Set it up, make an official appointment, then, you know, get to know him. What do you mean? Make a date? Go out for a drink? Yes, make it personal. Why? Mason Harding is number two to Harry Hopkins, and Harry Hopkins is the president's right hand. Harry Hopkins knows the president's every thought. We need to know what's happening in the Oval Office. See, we need to be this close, but currently we're that close. So, I get to know this Mason Harding, go out for a few drinks, what then? How personal do you want this to get? I'll tell you, maybe I'll pop down to Washington. It's an interesting town. Come on, you can do it, Avar. And no man can stand in your way when you set your mind to it. Look at me. I'll take that as a compliment. All the information is there, and money. Buy yourself a new wardrobe. I think a change of look might be wise. So, how will you feel if I get to know this man very well? What I feel has nothing to do with it. And what you feel has nothing to do with it either. We're losing this war, Anna. And we'll lose it for sure unless we get America in on our side. And this Mason Harding is the weak link, the way in? Yes, we think so. But it's very important that you don't get caught. Of course. Just one more thing. What? If they find out who you really are, 
We can't come to your rescue. Of course not. It would give everything away. Our whole operation. I understand. God, Vish is driving me nuts at the moment. He keeps alluding to moving in, but like in a sneaky way. <laughs> like he keeps making his sourdough here and then saying that the butter fits better in his house. Oh yeah, that is so sneaky. I mean, imagine loving you so much that he wants you to move in and live in his massive house rent free. Fine, but if I do move in, then what next? We get married or we break up? Well, I wish you guys would get married. Then I can do my hilarious best man speech. Honestly, the opening gag is just... What's your opening gag? Well, I can't tell you. I want your face on the day to be real. Right, well, I've got no interest in marriage, so you might as well tell me now. Oh, Shona, don't say that. Because if you don't get married, then I can't get married. And everyone knows that it's unnatural and unlucky for the youngest sister to wed before the elder. Right, let's stop talking about it now. It's making me stressed. Mm. Can you do my back? <sighs> what were you doing in Green Park last night? Ow! Shona, I'm gonna unmatch you and find my phone if you're gonna keep stalking me like a creepy uncle. I'm not stalking you, I just want to know where you are at night so I can sleep. Can you do it a bit more gently? It's gonna smear. So, what were you doing? I just went for a walk. At 10pm? Yeah, after the cinema. Okay, who did you go to the cinema with? No one. Who do I have to go to the cinema with? Don't say that, it makes me sad. Well, it's true, isn't it? Well, I'll go to the cinema with you. What did you see? I saw a big porno with a bunch of young lads going at each other's holes. Look, just don't go walking around at night by yourself, okay? It makes me stressed. I'm worried you're gonna get raped or murdered. Chance would be a fine thing. Jesus! Oh, I know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't. Have Why said. would you say that? I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said it. Touch wood. Touch wood? Oh, show. What? You've got a little spot on your back. Can I pop it? No, you cannot pop it. Look, I don't want to, it's just... What if someone sees it tonight and just vomits? Fine, go on then. Ow, fucking oh, hell! Disgusting! <laughs> don't wipe it on my robe! Do you want me to wipe it on your back? Look, I'm done now, you can go. Oh, thank you, master. Don't make me laugh, I'll sweat. Frank. What? Am I unattractive? I'm sorry? Do you think I'm pretty? Of course you're pretty. Uh, look, Catherine, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm talked out. I'm sorry. I'm very pretty. I'm good fun. I'm a very special person. That's what Carmen, my therapist, said. I'm also a brilliant cook. So why did he leave me? Oh, Jesus, Catherine, I don't know. People leave each other. You'll get over it. What am I going to do? About what? Saviour! Catherine, I've no advice to give you. I'm a middle-aged man with a health food business I don't believe in and a normally teetotal wife who's taken to the bottle. I would say, have some ginseng tea, eat some organic vegetables and learn to love yourself, but I know it's all a load of bollocks. I have to get back to him. I can't bear it. I need to speak to him. I guess this is the real thing. I know it's so. I can't... Give in, can I? I can't bear it. Okay, 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 Catherine, that's enough. Take it easy. I just need a hug. There you go. That's not a hug. Catherine, get off my lap. It's okay, your family. Exactly. Hold me, Frank. I'm so bloody lonely. What am I gonna do? All I need is just a little bit of hug. That's Catherine, all. Catherine, I'm very flattered, but steady on here. We don't want to. I wasn't trying to seduce you or anything. Catherine, you're acting crazy. If I was you, I'd call this Pepe now and tell him to F off. Just say, I'm sorry, Pepe, my mother's died. I don't need this. Take a hike. He's not called Pepe. Or whatever. Jose, then. Oh, for fuck's sake. All I'm asking is a little bit of attention. A little bit of support. That's all. I'm not asking you to marry me and bear my children. What is it with you men? Why is it that you misread the signals? Oh, you make me sick. Oh. <sighs> mm. 
I'm so glad we got to do this. I feel like I haven't seen you in forever. Anyway, what did you do last night? Um, what did you do last night? You're not telling me something. I hang out with Mark for a little bit. I knew it. It was just fun. We had fun. Here's what I don't like about this. You hate yourself after you see him. Every time. And then we go through this and you feel like shit. And it's almost like you're doing it on purpose because you hate yourself. He called me and it was late and we hung out. It's not a big deal. We just had fun. No. You had sex with him. More like an adult sleepover. <laughs> Look, I know you say he's cute and all that stuff, but he makes you feel like shit. You're a total catch and any guy would be psyched to be your man. You just need to make room for somebody who is nice to you. You know what? He's honest. He told me we are what we are and it's just fun. And I like that. Lillian? What is that? <laughs> I got engaged. What? What? He asked me last night. That's why he's been acting so weird recently. He must have been planning it for like two months and he is not a good liar. So every time he thought he was gonna blow it, he would just stay away from me. Oh my God, Lillian. I know, I'm shocked, but I'm happy. Oh my God, oh my God, I just got hot. Are you okay? I don't know, my armpits are sweating, my stomach hurts. I don't know what's happening. I can't believe this. Oh my God, you're getting married. So, uh, <laughs> you'll be my maid of honor? Oh God, oh God, of course. Are you sure you're up for it? I know it's a lot to ask and you've been through a tricky time and it's a lot to ask. Stop, like, stop, it's fine and it's not too much. I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. <laughs> Hold that thought. It's my fiance calling. <laughs> Hi, honey. Yeah, yeah. Yay. Yes, I just told Annie she's really excited. Uh, let me check. Hold on, Annie. Be right back. Yeah, I miss you too. <sighs> So why did you stay? I like houses when they're empty. I like the quiet. I like the spaces. I think spaces look better without people in them, don't you think? So is that why you killed them? It's a bit simplistic, isn't it? Killing them because I like space. Occam's razor. Simpler is truer. So help me get the timeline straight, Orson. Who did you stab first? Mr. or Mrs. Gilbert? I don't remember stabbing anyone. What about Mrs. Bentley? Two weeks ago, you stabbed her eight times and raped her. And the Lawrences? Their six-year-old son. Do you remember him? I told you, I blacked out. I already said. Do you think I'm lying? I think there are three families dead. And you're looking at life without the possibility of parole. And I think if you wanted to help me, you could take a short test. To see if I'm lying. There are 567 true or false statements. You answer as honestly as you can. I'm not going anywhere. True or false? I like mechanics magazines. Seriously? False? I think I'd enjoy working as a librarian. False? I get diarrhea once or more a month. <laughs> false? But thanks for asking. I like the sound of a woman's screams. Or 
person. They burned my dog. He was only a dog. It seems unduly piteous to me to burn someone's dog. Are you here to interrogate me? No? You liar. This is a black hole. It consumes matter, sucks it in and crushes it beyond existence. And when I heard that, I thought, well, that's evil and it's most pure. Don't you believe in evil, John? In me, Madsen? Me? What's happening in your marriage, John? Last time I saw you, there was a ring, and today, no ring. Is someone else involved? Is he handsome? Are you in pain? You think I kept the gun, but why would I do that? Wouldn't that make things easy for you? Have you come here to threaten me, John, because honestly, I wouldn't. Because I would be hurt and angry. Sweet mistress, what your name is else I know not, nor by what wonder you do hit of mine. Less in your knowledge and your grace you show not than our earth's wonder, more than earth divine. Teach me, dear creature, how to think and speak. Lay open to my earthy gross conceit, smothered in errors, feeble, shallow, weak. Against my soul's pure truth, why labour you to make it wander in an unknown field? Are you a god? Would you create me new? Transform me then, and to your power I'll yield. But if that I am I, this well I know. Your weeping sister is no wife of mine, nor to her bed no homage do I owe. Far more, far more to you do I decline. O oh, train me not, sweet mermaid, with thy note, to drown me in thy sister's flood of tears. Sing, siren, for thyself, and I will dote. Spread o'er the silver waves thy golden hairs, and as a bed I'll take them and there lie. And in that glorious supposition think, he gains by death that hath such means to die. Yet love being light, be drowned if she sink. No! Mom, please! I have to say this! I can't go outside! That's why I dropped out of high school. I could feel everyone's eyes staring at me and heard the giggles they tried to suppress. Jim would never want to be around me again. Sure, we talked sometimes. And he would never want to be around more than those few occasions. It seems I just got worse and worse at school. It felt as if the professor were breathing down my neck, silently mocking me as I continued to fail. And it seems that whatever crippled my leg, Yes, Mom, you might as well admit that I'm crippled has crippled the rest of my being throughout time. I have failed everywhere in the outside world. Here, there is nothing to fail at. I can't see Jim. It would only result in the ultimate failure. Rejection from the only person I've ever loved. Just have dinner without me. Please, Mom. 
Raven himself is horse that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of the direst cruelty. Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effect and it. Come to my man's jewels and take my seed for gall, you murdering ministers. Wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief. Come, thick night, and pull thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. I was working as a waitress in a cocktail bar, that, that much is true. But even then, I knew I'd find a much better place, either with or without you. And the five years we've had have been such good at times. I still love you. But I think it's time I live my life on my own. I guess it's just what I must do. Don't you want me? <sighs> you know, I can't believe it when I hear that you won't see me. It's much too late when you think you've changed your mind. You better change that back or we will both be sorry. Don't you want me? Don't you want me, baby? Eve, the... Don't be silly. Let's be in love while we can. Youth is the time to be in love, isn't it? Soon you and I will be dull and stupid and middle-aged like all other tedious people. And then it will be too late. Youth passes so quickly. Don't waste a second of it. <laughs> they say the mayfly only lives for one day. He is born in the morning, and all the afternoon he flutters over the river into the sunshine, dodging the traps and flirting with other mayflies. And at evening, he dies. Think of the poor mayfly who happens to be born on a wet day. Oh, the tragedy of it. Together like a rebellion. Whilst the rich sit up in their big glass building, smirking down on those less fortunate, a rage grows. It's soft at first, a small flickering ember, but then it turns into a flame. It grows larger and larger until it engulfs all those who live up in their high towers. smoke, choking their privileged lungs, whilst they beg us for mercy. <laughs> and we, the citizens below, we raise our voices, 
We sing as one. So everyone will know. The rebellion has come! <laughs> Rehabilitated. Well, let me see. You know, I don't have any idea as to what that actually means. I know you think you know what it means, son. To me, it's just a made up word, a politician's word. So young fellas like you and people like yourselves can wear a suit and a tie and have a job with a posh title. What do you really want to know? Am I sorry for what I did? There's not a day that goes by that I don't feel regret and because I'm in here and because society thinks I should. I look back on the way I was then, a young, stupid kid who committed that, that terrible crime. I want to talk to him. I want to reason with him. I want to try and talk some sense into him, tell him the way things are, but, but I can't. My kid's long gone. This guy, this old guy is all that's left. I gotta live with that. 